I think it was a 7 o'clock game. It was 106 degrees or 104 degrees that day. It was just absolutely record-breaking heat. And I said, I want to eat a, something good to eat, and I'm going to go take a little nap after that. And I go get some, something to eat at or the Breton's, Breton Steakhouse across the street. So I go in there, and, and uh, this really showed when my alcohol consumption was out of control early. I didn't really recognize it. But she, a little short skirt comes up to me at the, at the I'm almost in there by myself because it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And she says, um, can I get you a drink? I said, you know, a drink. Well, that sounds good. I'll get me this JV and water. And uh, my salad came and ate the salad. I said, give me a JV and water. Give me a JV and water. Had my steak. Give me a JB and water. About this time I'm out of control. Give me a JB and water. Give me a JB and water. Give me a JB and water. I come out staggering out of that place and uh, met a friend of mine, so ironically, I mean, uh, coincidentally, that was walking by as I was coming out. And he's, I hadn't seen him. His name was Joe Kotaika. I said, let's go have a drink. <laughs> that was what I need is a drink, right? So we went to the Roaring Twenties and had a drink. Come out of there. The bus is ready to leave. But the good thing was when we played in Kansas City, a lot of people had their own transportation. We were leaving late for the ballpark. We were leaving at 6 o'clock for the game, for a 7 o'clock game. No batting practice. It was just too hot. So I got on the bus. And I don't think anybody recognized how drunk I was. Got to the ballpark. I went right straight to my locker. Uh, took off all my clothes and walked right in the shower room and just put cold water on me and just poured it over and poured it on me. I came back. One of our players was our supplier for these little five milligram amphetamines. So I said, uh, I'll call him Bob. I said, Bob, uh, um, you got one? I don't know if I said it. I probably said, Bob, you got one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I gave you one, and uh, I went back into the shower room, came back out and says, uh, Bob, I need another one. He gave me another one. And uh, I went out and I warmed up. It was 100, and by this time I was probably cooled down to 103. Um, but I warmed up, I couldn't throw, probably, I probably didn't throw, I probably didn't throw six pitches. I threw one, second one was on a straight line, and do, 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 I'm ready. I mean, I'm ready. And I, by this time, I went back to the dugout, and my whole uniform is just soaked. I mean, through the socks, through the pants, through my undergarments through the sweatshirt, through my regular uh, jersey, pants, every, I'm just soaked. And it's all the booze coming out of me. And Jackson sitting next to me, he goes, God darn it, Rumi, you smell that? It smells like a damn brewery down here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smell anything. He got up and did a chin up on the dugout because he just knew some drunk was hanging over the dugout. And, uh, that you know, but he didn't, of course, there's no drunk. The drunk is right next to him. <laughs> I don't think, I, at that point, I, got, I mean, the booze is just pouring out of me. And at this time, I'm really sobering. And I'm saying, oh, in the guilt, in the shame, that I'm seeing myself for being in this position, pitching in front of my hometown, Kansas City. I mean, I went to school at 19th or 16th Street, and this is 22nd. I was born on 26th Street, and this is 22nd. I went to grade school at 39th Street, and this is 22nd. I lived at 42nd Street, and this is 22nd. This is my hometown. And I felt so guilty and so ashamed. I said, I gotta win this game or I'll never talk to me again. <laughs> you know. And uh, I had uh, won the game four to one, struck out six. Should have had a shutout. Could have had a shutout. I don't mean to say it that way. Um, Drago was on third base for some strange reason. Dick Drago. I don't know how he got to third base, but he was on third base with one out. And the ground ball hit right at Campanaris and Drago went between home and third, and froze. And Camper, Camper threw it to the first base and said, let's get the shirt out. It was seventh or eighth inning. He said, let's get the shirt out. We're winning. So he went and got the shirt out. Know, but I had six strikeouts and five were in the last two innings. <laughs> of course, my line after that was, because of the little amphetamines I, I took, my line after that for, for comedy, people that are really against all this stuff aren't going to see it too soon. They're going to see too much fun in it or too much uh, comedy in it. But anyway, I felt like saying, you know, what do you mean we're finished? Are we playing a double header? I'm ready to go. I'm just getting this game. <laughs> I'm just getting there. So anyway, uh, 
the next game after that, I pitched a shutout against uh, Minnesota. So yeah, sober for 31 years. Can you talk about the? Uh, well, the, the wretchedness that you get yourself into, that you feel. I mean, there's five years there that was just so, so miserable. Uh, from 1979 to right up to the first month of 1985. I mean, you get to such a low point. I mean, you're no hope. No, you see no future. You're in despair. Um, you're, we have this expression: pitiful and incomprehensible demoralization. And that's what I was into: pitiful, incomprehensible, incomprehensible demoralization. I was a mess, physically, um, socially, isolating. Um, Spiritually, there was no, nothing spiritually about me. When you get out of that, and when you, when you escape, you know, the throes of all that, and you land on your feet, thank you, God, when you land on your feet, you're so grateful. I mean, this is a new world. Our depths are so low, but my highs are so high now because, and they can't, if I didn't have those depths, which a lot of people don't go that low, most people don't. They have their ups and downs. You know, it's it's tough being human. Uh, but they don't go to the depths that the alcoholic does. So our highs now, and I'm not talking about false highs. I'm talking about feelings of gratitude and appreciation, and that magic word if you can achieve it, which sometimes I can and sometimes I can't, is humility. And that because. I don't know if you can achieve that humility unless you experience that low. Uh, it, so that's why and I say that it, alcoholics kind of have an advantage over other people in, in that regard. Thanks a lot. You don't want to talk about the parakeet? <laughs> <laughs> parakeet uniforms? <laughs>